السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على رسوله الكريم وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد Today's discussion, we want to look at a topic in the Qur'an that appears so frequently they can almost lose count. It appears in the Qur'an hundreds of times. So when you have a topic or the recurrent theme in the Qur'an that appears more than once, uh, it points to the significance of that theme. This particular topic is in hundreds of verses. And that topic has to do with the ayat of Allah, the signs of Allah. So I want you to think for a moment what a sign is supposed to be. What is a sign, an ayah or ayat? Ayah is singular, ayat is plural. What is a sign in any language? A sign is something that points you into a direction. So when you come to this masjid, you have people tell you the directions or you follow the directions on your iPhone or so you have roads, you have make a right on Morris Avenue. There's a signs that point you in a direction. So a sign is literally something that shows you the way. It's something that points to something else. So it's like an allusion to something else. So Allah Azza wa Jal created this universe out of His mercy. He could have created this universe in many ways. But out of His wisdom and His mercy and His extreme mercy of Allah Azza wa Jal, He created existence and he filled it with signs. And these signs point to where? All of the signs point to one direction. They all point to the Creator, the Rabb, the Ilah. They all point to Allah Azza wa Jal. So the universe is filled with signs. And all these signs are pointing to Allah Azza wa Jal. And when you think about that and you reflect over that, you realize those who don't believe in Allah is really... Uh, their hearts are closed, they're blind, they're, they have curtains over their hearts and their eyes and their ears because the universe is filled with nothing but signs and they're so easy to see, they're so plain, they're right in front of you so there really is no excuse not to see um, the existence of Allah and his ownership of the universe, his stewardship of the universe, his rububiya, his control over the universe. So how many times does the word ayat or ayah appear in the Quran? In my research, it might not be exact, um, I counted 357 verses in the Quran that speak about his signs directly. And when you look at verses that speak about Allah's signs without using the word ayah, it's even more than that. And when you think about the fact that every verse of the Qur'an is called what? Ayah, a sign. So 6,000 verses, 6,000 plus verses of the Qur'an, each and every one of them is a sign. And then in the content of the Qur'an, Allah speaks about the signs in hundreds of verses. So this is a huge topic in the Qur'an. One of the central messages of the Qur'an is that Human beings, open your eyes and see the signs of Allah all around you. Now, if you look at the discussion of the signs of Allah in the Quran, it's more insightful, it's, just, it's something amazing. When Allah talks about His signs, He does it in various ways. So, and you see the mercy of Allah in these signs. So, there are seven or eight types or ways that Allah discusses His signs. So, number one, the existence of the signs themselves is a mercy as I mentioned. Allah could have created this universe for us to find the way on our own. And He could have made the universe very difficult to decipher and reality and truth very difficult to find. But He made it so plain, He made it so easy, He filled the universe with signs. That's a mercy from Allah in and of itself, that's the first level. The second level is Allah mentions in many verses, in about 12 verses, that not only did he create these signs, but he shows these signs actively to you. So there's this idea of showing the signs to human beings. So Allah says, for instance, وَيُرِيكُمْ آيَاتِهِ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَعْقِلُونَ He shows you these signs so that you may reflect over them, you may understand. So Allah could have created the signs passively, as many like scientists today like Einstein, he believed, and he actually said that, he said that I believe 
in Spinoza's God, which is a passive God, a God that created the universe and revealed himself in the laws, the natural laws of the universe, and then he stepped back. A passive creator. That's one way of looking at the world. But here Allah reminds us again and again, that's not the Islamic conception. We know that Allah is an active maintainer and controller of the universe. Not a single leaf falls except that Allah orders it and commands it and is control of it. So Allah actively shows us his signs. So how does he show us these signs? He shows them in various ways. So Allah speaks about, for instance, uh, with the prophets. So with Bani Israel, Allah says in Surah Al-Baqarah, فَقُلْ نَضْرِبُوهُ بِبَعْضِهَا كَذَلِكَ يُحْيِي اللَّهُ الْمَوْتَى وَيُرِيكُمْ آيَاتِهِ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَعْقِلُونَ Allah says to Musa, you know, all the signs that he gave Musa, okay, throw your staff down, and Allah says, you know, strike one stone with another in this context, and he says, we will show you how we bring the dead to life. And Allah says, وَيُرِيكُمْ آيَاتِهِ Allah reminds Musa, we will show you his signs, the signs of Allah. So he shows the signs to the messengers. And he shows the signs to the people that the messengers were sent to. So Allah speaks to Musa in Surah Taha, for instance. قَالَ خُذْهَا وَلَا تَخَفْ سَنُعِيدُهَا سِيرَةَ الْأُولَى He says, take it, don't worry, and we will see that your hand will be restored to original form. وَضْمُمْ يَدَكَ إِلَى جَنَاحِكَ تَخْرُجْ بَيْضَاءَ مِنْ غَيْرِ سُوء You will find that it becomes white without any blemish because he had a handicap and a blemish. And he says, آيَةً أُخْرَى لِنُرِيَكَ مِنْ آيَاتِنَا الْكُبْرَى So he says, these and we will show you sign after sign. So Allah reveals these signs or shows these signs actively to his messengers. And not only that, he shows them to his people. So to our messenger, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he, in early days of Makkah, Allah reminded the messenger to show certain things to the people, remind them of life after death. And they used to ridicule him. So Allah says, خُلِقَ الْإِنسَانُ مِنْ عَجَلٍ سَأُرِيكُمْ آيَاتِي فَلَا تَسْتَعْجِلُونَ Allah speaking to the Prophet ﷺ says, look, we are, human beings are created hasty. They're created from haste. They want to see everything right away. So the Quraysh used to say, okay, this Akhirah, where is it? This resurrection, show us. They would crush these bones in front of the Prophet and say, okay, bring them back to life. They wanted to see him immediately. Allah said, look, be patient. We will show you the signs. But, you know, human beings are created from haste. Don't, you know, rush the things. You will see the signs in due uh, time. So Allah says to the Prophet, وَقُلِ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ Say to the people, all praise belongs to Allah. سَيُرِيكُمْ آيَاتِهِ فَتَعْرِفُونَهَا Allah says to the Messenger, remind the Meccans, that look, praise Allah, and you will surely see the signs of Allah, and you will recognize them. So they are coming. No doubt they are coming. Even in the early days of Makkah, it was unimaginable that there would come a time where the Muslims become dominant. All these prophecies of the messenger would come to fruition. But Allah keeps remind, look, we are going to show you uh, our signs. And he talks to us. So you might say, okay, that's for the messenger. That's for the previous nations. No. For each and every one of us, Allah does the same thing. So Allah says, for instance, surat, um, in various surahs of the Quran, أَمْ تَرَى أَنَّ الْفُلْكَ تَجْرِي فِي الْبَحْرِ بِنِعْمَةِ اللَّهِ لِيُرِيَكُمْ مِنْ آيَاتِهِ Don't you see the ships that sail the seas in order for us to show you the signs? This is how we show you, actively show the signs to you. So all you have to do is open your eyes. Allah, isn't, He didn't just create passive signs, but He's actively showing them to you. When you walk down the road and the rain hits you in the face, you forgot to bring your umbrella, that's Allah actually showing you His signs. When you're going somewhere and suddenly the news t comes to you, oh look, this happened. The bridge in Baltimore collapsed. This happened over here. These are signs coming to your ears and your eyes actively. This is Allah actively showing you His signs. So this is the mercy of Allah. He created the universe with an interconnected network of signs pointing to Him. But He actively shows us these signs. So there is no, We cannot mistake them. You cannot, only the person whose eyes are closed, but then you'll hear the signs, even if your eyes are closed. So Allah yurikum ayatihi. That's the second level of Allah demonstrating His signs to us, showing them to us actively. There's a third level where you might say, okay, these signs are here, but I don't understand them. It's hard for me to comprehend them. 
So there's this idea of bayan, making the signs clear. So Allah makes the signs clear and easy to follow for us. So Allah says in 14 verses, كَذَلِكَ يُبَيِّنُ اللَّهُ آيَاتِهِ لِلنَّاسِ لَعَلَّهُمْ يَتَّقُونَ Allah again and again in various verses shows us that look, He gives us these signs and He spells them out plainly. He makes them clear. He clarifies them. You know, so that some people, they're, they're, they, they have difficulty comprehending things. So that there's no excuse to human beings. Allah says, no, these signs are not complicated. And I will spell them, I will actively show them to you, but I'll also make them very plain and simple. I will make bayan of these signs. So again and again, Allah reminds us in various verses, and you should re read these verses, reflect over the messages in these verses. So in one verse in Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah says, وَقَالَ الَّذِينَ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ لَوْ لَا يُكَلِّمُنَ اللَّهُ أَوْ تَأْتِينَ آيَةً they say, why isn't Allah speaking to us? Why doesn't Allah bring us signs? Allah says, كَذَلِكَ قَالَ الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِهِمْ مِثْلَ قَوْلِهِمْ If you say these things now, there are people before you who said the same things. And then Allah says, تَشَّابَهَتْ قُلُوبُهُمْ Your hearts are the same as those. قَدْ بَيَّنَّ الْآيَاتِ لِقَوْمِ يُقِنُونَ Allah says, but the reality is, we have made our signs clear enough to those who have certainty and faith in Allah. So all these, these are just people with diseases in their hearts who say things like that. Well, where are the signs of Allah? How come we don't see them? Why don't we understand them? Make bayan of these signs. All you have to do is remove the curtains from your hearts. You know, let your pure nature come out. And just with an honest and open mind and heart, look at these signs. That's number three. Number four, not only does Allah create these signs, He shows them to us actively. You know, yurikum uh, ayatina. Not only does he make bayan of the signs, but then he repeats the signs again and again and again, this idea called tasriful ayat. So Allah says, Unzur kayfa nusarriful ayat. Look at how we repeat the signs again and again. So some human beings might say, well, okay, these are signs, but then we forget about them. You know, they, if they come occasionally, you might make the excuse, well, you know, I don't have a lot of signs around you, but Allah keeps repeating the signs again and again, so there's no mistake. Again and again, unzur kayfa nusarriful ayati la'allahum yafqahun. Look at how we plainly repeat the signs again and again. We make tasrif of the signs so that there's no mistake. And you know, the mercy here is that Allah wants us to wake up. Allah wants us to see Him. Allah wants us to uh, pay heed to the sign. He wants us to find the way. So He made things so easy for us. So again and again, this is number four. Number five, not only that, we're not, in, we're not done yet. Number five, Allah makes tafsil of the ayat. وَكَذَلِكَ نُفَصِّلُ الْآيَاتِ وَلِتَسْتَبِينَ سَبِيلَ الْمُجْرِمِينَ نُفَصِّلُ الْآيَاتِ Tafsil means to spell them out in detail. So sometimes people have, you know, they have thick minds. They're like, oh, I can't, I don't understand that. Spell it out to me like, you know, like you have those books, you know car shop for idiots or the dummy's guide to this or that. So there you, sp you know, plainly spell things out in detail. A to B to C so that there's no mistake. Allah does that with His signs. كَذَلِكَ نُفَصِّلُ ayat Again and again. How many verses? 14 verses that speak about تَفْصِيلُ ayat The idea of repetition of the verses so there's no mistake. Now some people might say, okay, these are signs around us but I still have trouble seeing. So Allah brings another level. And level six is Allah sometimes He reveals the signs to us in the form of scripture. So in many, many verses Allah says, وَلَقَدْ أَنزَلْنَا إِلَيْكَ آيَاتٍ بَيِّنَا We have actively revealed the signs in the forms of scripture through messengers. So then, you know, not only did He create them around us, but then He, he reveals the scripture to remind you of the message, to remind you of the signs, to remind you of what is around you. Although technically you don't need the scripture, you can see the signs, you open your eyes, you see the world the way it exists. You look at the natural wonders in the universe, that's enough to, to point to Allah Azza wa Jal, to His rububiya. But then Allah reveals scripture to spell it out plainly for people, because some people need help. And then still people reject the message. Not only that, we are on number six. Not only that, not only did he reveal scripture to us, but he sent messengers to recite those scriptures to us actively. 
So he sent human beings, he chose human beings. How many messages? 124,000 messengers in human history and prophets in human history to come and show you and point to the signs. The signs are there. It's enough that they're there. It's enough that we can see them. But then Allah sends human beings to talk to you and say, hey, look, look at these signs. Look at what's happening around you. Open your eyes. So there's human beings that come to remind you about the sign. That's level seven. And then these human beings, Allah says, we teach them to recite the signs to us. So, tilka ayatullahi natluha alayka bil haq. These are the signs that we recite to you plainly. So these messengers, they do tilawa of the signs that are found in the scripture. So this was level eight. So look at how many levels of mercy there are in the creation of the universe and the creation of this system of signs that point to Allah. After all of these levels, if anyone rejects Allah, is not able to see the truth, then he has none and she has none to blame but him or herself. Because everything is there, the signs exist, Allah spells them out, Allah shows them to us actively, they're unmistakable, they're so easy to follow, they're repeated again and again. Then there's messengers sent to every single nation to remind us of the sign. Then there's scripture sent to nations, through, and then the messenger is ordered to recite that scripture to us. So we have these great books, the books of scripture. We have Al-Quran Al-Kareem, 6,000 plus verses. All, every single one of them is a sign of Allah. And when you reflect over the meanings and the contents of the verses, they're all signs within signs within signs. So in conclusion, the signs Allah created around us, the ayat, they refer to two types of things. From this discussion, what are the two types of signs around us? There are the physical signs that exist in creation, and then there are the signs that are recited in scripture. So there's the ayat that you see around us, and then there's ayat that you recite in the Quran and in the previous scriptures. So these are the two types of signs that, that exist around us. And then all of these signs is really unmistakable. They all lead you to one direction. They lead you to the rububiyah and the uluhiyah of Allah. You realize that there is a creator, not just a creator, an active maintainer and sustainer of the universe, the Rabb, that controls every heartbeat in your, in your body, that controls every limb, that controls every organ, that controls every muscle, every heartbeat, every contraction of a muscle, whether it's in the gym, whether you're just walking, whether you're struggling with a handicap. There's so many signs, it's unmistakable. It's unmistakable to see Allah all around us. So these signs, are a great mercy of Allah. Allah did not have to create the universe like that. He could have made it a very complex system where you have to find Allah on your own with great difficulty and turmoil, but it's exceedingly easy. And there are so many signs within signs. If you reflect over some of these signs, within the signs themselves there are signs. So for instance, if we look at the natural signs that Allah created uh, in Surah Al-Baqarah, verse 164, Allah says, Inna fi khalqi samawati wal ard, wa akhtila fi layli wal nahar, wal fulki lati tajri fi al bahri bima yanfa'u al nas, wa ma anzal Allahu min al samai min ma'in, fa ahya bihi al arda ba'da mawtiha, wa batha fiha min kulli dabba, wa tasrif al riyahi wa sahab al musakhari bain al samai wal ard, la ayatin li qawmin yaqilun. In this verse, Allah shares eight signs. Eight signs that he points to around us. In the end, he says these are the signs for people who use their aql, their minds. What are these signs if we go through them? Khalq is samawati wal ard. What's that? Creation of the heavens and the earth, the creation itself. Waqtilaf al layli wal nahar. The alternation of the night and day. These are natural signs. And number three, wal ful kilati tajri fil bahri bima yamfa'un nas. The ships that sail the seas with that And all the animals, the animal kingdom that follows that vegetation. And then he said, And then the winds that are in the atmosphere. 
وسحاب المسخر the clouds that hang between the heavens and the earth so all these, these are eight or nine signs that are mentioned in the verse depending on how you count but if you look at these signs some of these depend on others so if you have if you look at just these signs make a list and look at what the signs are and how they they're interdependent upon each other within that there are signs there are signs within signs here as Shaykh Al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah in Majmool Fatawa he talks about these signs he says it's so amazing not only Allah pointed to these signs that you can see around us but there are so many lessons within these signs and that is that some of these signs depend on others so Allah began with the creation of the heavens and the earth right so you have the heavens and you have the earth the sky above and the, the earth that we live on and the rest of the signs they're either from, above, either from above or from the earth so then you have the night and the day that's from the heavens then you have the shifting winds that's in the sky and in the heavens you have the rain that's in the heaven the cloud that comes from the heaven on the earth what do you have you have the vegetation sign you have the sign of the animal kingdom and you have the signs of the ships that human beings make and they sail the seas and all these one leads to the other so the creation of the heavens and the earth it creates a system of night and day and the system of night and day helps the winds in the atmosphere the winds they give rise to the clouds the clouds they give rise to the wind the rain the rain comes down to the earth and the rain gives rise to the vegetation when you have vegetation the animals follow in order to graze upon that vegetation and then you have ships they're depending on the winds without the winds a ship cannot sail a ship would be just stuck in the ocean so the ships are dependent upon the wind tasrif al riyah and the ships are made by human beings so even Another great lesson here is some people think, well, the natural wonders of the universe are signs of Allah. But then when you look at the man-made things, they're not really signs of Allah. So, but here, if you look at, there's eight or nine signs. Almost all of them are natural signs. But one of them, smack in the middle of these natural signs, there is the ships. And what are ships? They're crea created by human beings. They're manufactured, rather, by human beings. And then the cargo is also manufactured by human beings. So Allah says, even the ships that you make with your own hands, and the cargo that you put in the ships, and you take these ships to different portions, they're signs of Allah. This is a great sign of Allah. And it's something that's so relevant, it never goes away. Um, <clears throat> when I gave this talk a couple of years ago, there was a Suez Canal disaster. And there was a ship that got stuck in Egypt, in the Suez Canal, for many weeks. Just because the winds shifted in the wrong direction and the ship just went sideways and got stuck. And it caused massive disruption in the shipping industry. And subhanAllah, talking, having this lecture today, just a couple of days ago, you have that ship that you know, broke that bridge in the Baltimore uh, Harbor. And now that's causing massive disruptions of cargo. So this is a sign that Allah created, ships that sail the seas with cargo. And that's how human being and civilization sustains itself. But that can easily be disrupted by these natural disasters. This is a great sign of Allah. So what's the lesson for us? The lesson for us is that everything is a sign of Allah. The natural signs as well as the man-made artificial signs. So just like people say, well, it's hard to find God in the concrete jungle. You should be able to find God in the concrete jungle just as much as you find Him in the Amazon rainforest or in these natural settings because everything is a sign of Allah the electricity, the skyscrapers you know these phones, these smartphones, the androids and the apple they're signs of Allah Allah gave us that ingenuity Allah gave us the resources Allah gave us that permission so the believers they see Allah everywhere they see the signs of Allah everywhere whether it's man-made or artificial so really with all of that anyone really cannot see Allah they have none to blame but themselves I'll end with two things, a piece of poetry that's really beautiful and there was a meme that I saw a couple of uh, weeks ago the meme was a human being standing be in front of like a uh, Amazon rainforest so this human being standing there in front of him is a rainforest with all these colors and animals and birds flying and a rainbow and a waterfall and so on and so forth and the man is standing there and he's saying God if you exist show me a sign and he's standing looking at everything before him and he's still saying, God, where are the signs? If you exist, show me a sign. That really is how it is. 
You know, the signs are all around us. That's the message of the Quran. It's unmistakable, unmissable. There's nothing that is not a sign of Allah actually. And when someone cannot see that, they have none to blame but themselves. I'll end with a piece of poetry. It's from Labid ibn Rabia, one of the Jahili poets. He was one of the great poets of the era of Jahiliya, and then he embraced Islam. And the Prophet ﷺ praised his poetry. So he said something beautiful. He said, فَيَا عَجَبًا كَيْفَ يُعْصَلْ إِلَاهُ أَمْ كَيْفَ يَجْحَدُهُ الْجَاحِدُ He said, it's so amazing how Allah can be disobeyed by human beings. And how He can be rejected by human beings. And he says in the second line, وَلِلَّهِ فِي كُلِّ تَحْرِيكَةٍ وَتَسْكِينَةٍ أَبَدًا شَاهِدُ He said, rather that reality is that every movement in the world and every stationary position in the world bears witness. To what? To Allah. When your hand is moving is a sign. When your hand is on the table and not moving is a sign. So every tahrikatin, every taskinatin is a sign. Shahidu. And then he ends by saying, وَفِي كُلِّ شَيْءٍ لَهُ آيَةٌ تَدُلُّ عَلَىٰ أَنَّهُ وَاحِدُ In every single thing that exists, there is a sign and is pointing to the idea that He is one. It's unmistakable. This is the reality of the universe. May Allah give us hearts that are open to the signs of Allah. May Allah give us hearts that are receptive to the signs of Allah. May Allah make us true believers. هَذَا وَصَلَّى اللَّهُ وَسَلَّمَ عَلَىٰ نَبِيِّنَا مُحَمَّدٍ وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم. So the eight. Someone. So who's taking notes here? Usually uh, Maz takes notes, but not today, huh? So number one. Number one, the existence of the signs. Ayat. The ayat. Yeah. Their existence. Everything. All. The, every eight point has to do with the ayat. But the first is Allah created the ayat. Okay. He didn't have to. What's the second? Actively showing, arahul ayat, arahul ayat ayatin al kubra. So this idea of show actively showing them, okay. Number three, um, yeah, bayan, bayan of the ayat, making them very clear to follow, easy to follow. Four, tasrif, repeating the verses, repeating the signs again and again. Tafsil, details. Tafsil means details. So giving details, spelling them out plainly in detail. And then, six. Okay, yeah. So before that, revealing the, the, the signs as scripture. So the scripture are signs. So the signs are revealed. Inzalul yeah. ayat, right? And then number seven, the messengers, anbiya. There are 80 verses where Allah mentions the anbiya along with the signs of Allah. The recitation of scripture. So not only does he reveal the scripture, but he sends human beings to show them to us, recite them to us. And then the recitation is the last one. The tilawatul ayat. That's number eight. Tilawatul ayat. The messengers themselves are an ayat and then reciting, them reciting is another Well, the messengers showing you the ayat. So they show it various ways. They teach you the ayat. So the Prophet not only did he recite Quran to the companions, but he, sh he explained it to them. So that he may make plain to the human beings, to the people, what has been revealed to them. So re revelation of signs, appointing messengers along with the revelation of these signs, and then recitation of those signs. So this is number eight. So this, this looks like a full like a genre of study because like it would be interesting what when Allah uses the word tafsir. <coughs> Absolutely. There's so much to study and ponder over and make the double in the Quran. Each one of these, there's 80 verses about the messengers, 7 about the revelation of the ayat, 33 about the recitation of the ayat. So if you just like search for the ayat, the verses that mention ayat, you know, categorize them, look at how Allah mentions them and just like reflect over them. There's so much to learn, so many insights. And these insights are not captured in any single book. People think that all the books of tafsir have everything. The Quran is an ocean. And the more you think and the more you reflect, you will come up with insights perhaps that other people did not come up with. And they're, they're, they're amazing. And sometimes with the change of circumstances and new technology, sometimes we see verses in new lights. Sometimes, you know, the earlier Muslims did not see things in a certain way. And other times they saw things in a certain way that we don't see. So this is the importance of tadabbur. 
you know, over the ayat of Allah. You know, it's a weeknight, it's late, but if there's anyone else that has questions or comments or reflections, marhaban. Yeah, so study, do a study of that. You'll come up with so many talks and lectures and khutbahs, Juma khutbahs, and so much material you can come up with.